Good afternoon, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets for Thursday's trading, the uh, 10th of November 2016. Be, please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com, or alternatively, you can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so this is a video dissecting and uh, doing a uh, prognosis, a diagnosis on the um, US economy and uh, US uh, equities post Trump, shall we say, shock, okay? Um, so this is a, a damage control really from my perspective and uh, argument so far has been that Mr. Trump is going to enact some sort of fiscal stimulus which in turn is going to uh, send the equity markets higher which obviously evidently has been seen with the S&P 500 at present and obviously moving up to this 2180 zone. So let's try and dissect the market now from a um, technical point of view, from an intermarket analysis point of view, and let's see exactly where this US market is going. My understanding really is that this that Mr. Trump really is a, um, is a is a great liability. Initially, markets are excited given the fact that he's going to uh, enact this so-called uh, uh, tax cuts and help the uh, companies, etc., etc. But in, in, in a world where we are so reliant upon globalization and um, obviously free trade, the short term euphoria really is going to fade and it's going to be one of uh, certainly negative consequences from my understanding and my interpretation, okay, and especially for global trade anyway. Okay, so if Mr. Trump goes ahead with his so called argument of tariffs, sanctions, so on and so forth, and tax cuts, etc., he can do everything he wants to speed up obviously exports jobs but if there's no one to sell to because if you put a trade tariff on or you have a trade barrier etc the other country will do the same so net net it's already been proven game theory has already been proven trade theory has already been proven that free trade really is the only way to go okay and i can't see how that's going to be beneficial for the u.s economy okay you can build roads infrastructure copper is obviously moving higher but where is that going to leave you other than even more debt okay and with a company that's all, with a country that's already indebted, and you have you have uh, obviously rating agencies like Moody's and, and and Fitch that are already exerting pressure on an economy that has used QE uh, uh, to uh, obviously lift the market. It's very hard to see if how fiscal stimulus will do that, which in in turn obviously will burden the, the government even further. Okay, so really it's it's a ticking time bomb this debt uh, that they have and uh, I, from my understanding it's going to get even worse okay and obviously the social divide and and the breakup of america and how it's going backwards it's become a racist sexist misogynist xenophobic country that's not associated with success that's not associated with, with prosperity and uh, from my understanding it'll be a full 360 full three full circle again okay and then they'll uh, certainly uh, vote in uh, the democrats from my understanding anyway and, and i don't think mr trump will last four years it'll be it'll be a miracle if he lasts six months given his uh, his uh, his antics okay so again he's it's a great great liability and uh, mr trump alone is a reason why you should be selling the uh, the u.s stock market from my understanding okay so let's let's try and dissect it that's my opinion and opinions don't really matter okay what matters is price action and uh, the reaction of the market and let's see uh, if my understanding of my theory is correct okay let's start off with the nasdaq i always like looking at the nasdaq because it's um, very sensitive to disposable income and uh, really it's, it's, it's a bellwether the weekly chart of the nasdaq remains bearish from my understanding okay uh, weekly chart certainly remains bearish uh, for my uh, understanding here on price action you have fib 75 percent so fib 75 percent was 4845 you have a gap fill at 4890 okay until we take out the pivot high my bias will remain bearish on the nasdaq okay you do have gap fill at 4890 on the Nasdaq, so that's something to certainly watch out for. You had uh, Fib 75% with the obviously futures now at 4860. It'll be interesting to see where futures finish. The futures start to flush here quite substantially, which I am expecting. And I'll be honest with you, I'm talking my book here because I'm actually short the Euro stocks and short the Nasdaq. Uh, I'll be very surprised the Nasdaq even opens up at 4860. Where are we now? We're currently 1145. So not too long before the US futures open and the cash market opens. I'll be very surprised. I mean, if we open up at 4845, that will not shock me whatsoever, okay? That's probably what I do expect, to be honest with you, okay? And that's what I'm expecting right now. So, again, looking for risk aversion, okay? 
looking at the uh, 60 minute chart of the uh, Nasdaq, you certainly have solid resistance here at 4830, then you have resistance at 4850, and then obviously gap fill at 4890. Will we close that gap? That's the, that's the question. Yes, you've had the Nikkei up 6% overnight, which really was already factored in, folks, okay, given the fact that the US markets obviously rallied late in the session yesterday. A lot of that was already baked in. Okay, so again, like I said, look for risk aversion, okay? Looking at the 10-minute uh, chart now of the uh, NASDAQ, again, you had solid, solid resistance in this region yesterday at 4,830. So again, uh, the unfilled gap remains below as well. You have an unfilled gap at 4,660. That's one of the reasons why I say this is the Trump liability gap, okay? If Mr. Trump fails or makes uh, fails to keep his promise of, of tax cuts and fiscal expansion and some fiscal stimulus, uh, really that the, the market's heading towards that gap okay so watch out for that gap below also with regards to tech it's going to be very hard obviously his immigration policy certainly isn't conducive his um his taunts versus china isn't going to help the tech sector either given the fact that's a big market especially for the likes of apple google facebook etc it certainly doesn't bode well okay and if they are going to be uh, trade barriers and tariffs and restrictions and so on and so forth it certainly doesn't bode well for technology let's put it that way okay so nasdaq for my understanding certainly into resistance now let's cross verify that let's look at the semiconductors so semiconductor chart on the daily really even with this monster monster rally that we've seen lately it's nothing but a um, uh, bearish from my understanding i mean you can clearly see here you have this pattern of a uh, h and s formation your left shoulder is here your right shoulder obviously has been put in you're, you're certainly playing out with h and s if, if the monster rally that we've just seen failed to send the semiconductors to new highs, what do you think will happen now? Okay, that's my understanding and that's my argument. Okay, so looking for a lower high and for the markets to certainly move lower. And again, Trump, uh, Miss Hillary was certainly seen the, as the softer one. Mr. Uh, Mr. Trump, again, uncertainty, okay, as to what he'll do with regards to the pharmaceutical, the biotech and the uh, tech sector as a whole. Okay, so will you go after the uh, the pharmaceutical companies? That's the question. Okay, so again, watch out for the HNS formation on these semiconductors. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, going over now to the biotechs. Biotech at present. So looking at the biotech sector here, daily chart certainly has thrust higher. Impressive. I didn't expect this gap fill to hold. Obviously, incorrect there. You have gap fill here and gap fill here. So two gap fills to close. And again, yes, we bounced off the low. Okay. The uncertainty, etc., of a potential uh, Hillary versus uh, Trump of uh, situation certainly has abated. Okay, so from my understanding, you are looking at resistance, multiple horizontal levels of resistance, key zones here, and this is a area that where you will see a lot of turbulence. Okay, so again, looking for a pause. So the biotech certainly are slam dunk into resistance, and therefore the Nasdaq is into resistance as well, and that you are looking at the Nasdaq moving lower. You, again, you've got a unfilled gap here and an unfilled gap here. So you've got two unfilled gaps below to close, and that certainly will be in play. So look for weakness on the NASDAQ. That's my understanding at present, okay? Looking for weakness. Okay, so biotechs and the semiconductors, which I've explained to you, are into resistance. The NASDAQ is into resistance. Therefore, given the fact that the NASDAQ is the market chief globally, the Shanghai, the DAX, and the NASDAQ, both into resistance. Now let's cross verify the NASDAQ with the DAX because the DAX and NASDAQ go hand in hand. It's very important. They both represent innovation, technology, etc. So this is what I always do. Uh, okay, let me just bring up the um, the DAX chart here. We should have it. Here we go. Okay, so the German DAX chart on the daily chart, which I've already explained in my European markets, you're into resistance. So can the NASDAQ make a new high with the DAX being into resistance? I think not. Okay. I think not. You are going to start to see a move lower, uh, led by the DAX, which obviously will send the NASDAQ lower, etc., etc. Okay? So that, get, again, confirms weakness on the NASDAQ. Okay? Let's move over now to the Dow. I think I need to look at the Dow. Uh, before I do, just look at the chart of Apple, folks. Okay? Let me just quickly look at the chart of Apple. I'll give you an insight here for uh, on, on Apple, too. Okay? So Apple certainly has bounced. Just uh, draw my trend lines here. You have an unfilled gap here. You have an unfilled gap here, which hasn't been closed yet, folks. So bear that in mind. Okay, you've got an unfilled gap above. Horizontal resistance here. 
Okay, so at the moment we're basically consolidating. So Apple certainly hasn't joined the rally in US equities, okay? So therefore you are looking vulnerable to a gap close below here, gap close below here, and a gap close below here. So again, the Chinese market, okay, is no longer available with Mr. Trump at the helm, okay? The uncertainties and so on and so forth that he brings with him, okay, you are looking at risk aversion. So in the Apple chart, certainly will start to move lower, okay? Let's move on to the uh, other uh, major tech players, Facebook, okay? Facebook has been weak ever since the uh, earnings, okay? So you are looking at 200 MA potential support, and given the fact that we've broken out, there is an argument for you to go up and close the gap above. Certainly is a strong argument, but there's no catalyst for that. Okay, with Mr. Trump's presidency, even more of an argument to move lower. Okay, so bearish argument certainly is more strong. Let's bring up the likes of um, Alphabet now. Okay, so Alphabet or Google again will be under pressure due to a, a, a Trump presidency. And you have an unfilled gap below. The market has not put in a higher high. You're looking at a lower high and you're looking at that gap to close. If I take the fibra retracement ratio from the pivot high to the pivot low, you're into that 61 to 75%. So again, it's very hard for you for one to see the NASDAQ to move higher, okay? With unfilled gaps below remaining the targets, okay? So the tech sector, from my understanding, certainly is into resistance. Now, moving on to the Dow. The Dow has had a stellar run, again, led by the Dow Transport. So we'll bring up the Dow Transports first and foremost. Okay, so again, infrastructure spending, uh, fiscal stimulus, etc., certainly is helping the Dow transports to uh, a, a potential high, a new high. Now, the daily or weekly chart certainly has come into resistance in this region. Okay, so you have resistance here, you got resistance here. So there's multiple resistance zones to stop the uh, the advancement of the uh, Dow transports. Again, it's an isolated case to a large extent. Although again, Dow transports generally under Dow 30 does. Uh, indicate a potential rally or uh, just give you an early warning not a warning but an early uh, signal in terms of the next market direction we've certainly taken out a lot of gaps below we are now into horizontal resistance in the dow jones uh, so you are looking at the market being capped so you are double top on the weekly chart okay if the dow does break out and starts to move higher then that's a different story altogether but for at this very juncture you certainly are back into resistance okay so Dow, Dow transports both into resistance, indicating risk aversion, okay? Now let's move on to the Russell, uh, okay? So Russell 2000, again, a good harbinger of uh, what's to come with regards to the S&P. Uh, the Russell 2000 is into resistance, okay? You've got diagonal trend line and you've got horizontal resistance. So previous support equals resistance with an unfilled gap below. So you are looking at risk off there as well. In terms of the uh, S&P 500, now, the uh, weekly chart at the moment really is in no man's land, okay? The daily chart is in confirming to you of resistance at 2176 to 2181. Now, the futures did hit a pivot high of 2181, so you are looking at risk aversion here on S&P 500, and you're looking at the market's potentially moving lower. So, again, all those zones will come into play. If we do continue to move higher, then you have 2187 as well. So, certainly looking for risk aversion here, folks, today, okay? So, looking for risk aversion on the S&P 500. Okay, so again, <clears throat> Russell confirms a weakness on the S&P 500, and therefore one would argue that the market is going to start to move lower, okay? Now the Nikkei, or Nikkei as well, Nikkei has pushed higher today, but we are now back into resistance on the Nikkei. You've got gap fill resistance here. So we're back to basically where we started, okay, on the Nikkei, so back to resistance, okay? Looking for risk aversion. Now, the other comments as well with regards to the US, you had uh, uh, a comment out from the Trump um, uh, government stating that uh, Miss Yellen would remain, okay, there will be no pressure on her to leave, okay, and that uh, there was also a comment out from one of the Fed officials that interest rates would certainly, uh, well, nothing would change with the Trump presidency and it wouldn't prevent them from raising rates. So again, you have a hawkish Fed, stronger dollar, okay, and therefore you are looking for the market to move lower from my understanding, folks, okay. That's my interpretation, that's my understanding for the market certainly to go into a risk aversion mode and for the markets to move lower, okay? Now let's look at the actual uh, breakup of the market uh, and also let's look at the USDJPY too. Let's bring up the daily chart, the USDJPY, you're into its 200 MA, okay? So USDJPY into resistance equals US markets into resistance, okay? So again, Nikkei into resistance, USDJPY into resistance, you are looking at risk off for US markets, okay? 
that's just another angle looking at it from a forex market okay now let's bring up a chart of copper as well copper certainly is starting to show weakness here certainly has been an impressive run okay but one that's certainly coming to an end now okay from my understanding there is a gap that needs to be filled up here not too far off okay so you've got horizontal resistance here previous support equals resistance there okay so you are now coming into resistance on copper with copper being into resistance that means the commodities into resistance commodities into resistance you're looking at equity markets being into resistance as well so this so-called uh, fiscal uh, stimulus led rally certainly is coming to an end okay now let's look at the actual uh, breakdown of the markets again so financials s p 500 five financials you're into resistance you can see here we've broken out behind to cap fill now certainly hitting a potential double top on the financial sector so looking for risk off there okay so again early indication of weakness the daily chart at the moment oil prices haven't really rallied so bear that in mind don't get too excited with this rally you certainly do have resistance in this region here so gap fill and horizontal resistance so again looking weak energy sector as well looking at the retail side of things okay so certainly have pushed higher given the overall market sentiment just connecting the highs together <clears throat> puts you back into horizontal or diagonal trend line resistance bring up the builders uh, okay so the building stock certainly uh, push higher let's go to the daily chart here okay so certainly thrust higher oversold bounce for early and uh, trading nowhere nothing fast okay consumer staples again has held the potential support zone but still remains weak utilities still remain weak nothing there in terms of argument for a move higher industrials very very impressive okay again fiscal stimulus certainly leading the move higher so you have to respect that to a large extent you have to respect that okay so s p certainly being led higher by the uh, industrials consumer discretionary certainly have bounced off the potential pivot low okay so it's really industrials really that's really uh, the uh, shining star financials into resistance energy into resistance retail coming into resistance home builder builders going nowhere consumer staples just bounce of support but again remains weak utilities remain weak it's really the industrials okay so look at the s p miners okay so looking at the weekly chart you clearly have double top resistance on the mining sector as well so again looking for risk aversion okay on the mining stock so again s p 500 certainly will come under pressure okay and uh, certainly will be looking to uh, be weak from my understanding so looking for risk off folks on the s p 500 unless like I said, the Dow starts to well continues to make a new high. The Dow transports continue to make high. The Russell breaks out. The S and P 500 breaks past this 2180 zone. Then we'll have to discuss exactly where the market stands. But for now, my understanding certainly looking as being exhausted, and looking for a reversal on the uh, the actual market. So the Russell 3000 as well into horizontal resistance. So everything is indicating weaker. US dollar still remains firmly bid and that will be the case again a stronger dollar if you take out the high in the dollar here again it will be a risk negative given the fact that dollar stronger dollar hurts commodities uh, and obviously with the rate hike in December dollar is set to go higher okay I think that's a good summation my understanding yep 2180 looking for resistance Nasdaq should remain below its previous high okay looking for a lower high Russell, S and P 500, the Nasdaq, the Dow, are all into resistance here and looking for risk off. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye. Now.